Examples of evolution. This is a graph that shows the evolution of drug resistance in HIV. So there are three patients. Patient one is in is the black line, um, two would be the blue line, and patient three is the red line. And so this is the percent of HIV, HIV um, the virus, resistant to a drug called 3TC. And so in the beginning, there's um, just about no resistant HIV um, in any of the patients. But HIV copies itself really, really poorly, and so when it does that, when it copies itself really poorly, it, um, it messes up a lot, it mutates. And um, so in any population, there's always going to be one or two that are um, resistant to whatever drug you have, unfortunately. And so you give that um, two weeks, two and a half weeks, and look at this, the percentage of HIV resistant to T 3TC is up to about 100%. So what happened is you killed off, in the beginning, you kill off 99.9% .9 of the HIV, and or maybe 99.99% of the HIV, and the 0.01 that's left is resistant to HIV. It had some spontaneous mutation that it had before the drug was introduced. The drug was introduced and that one was able to live. And so it reproduces because that's what viruses do reproduces, 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 and all of its offspring are resistant. And so in not too long, in, in three weeks, you have patients who um, have HIV resistance to that drug, and now you have to switch drugs. So if you didn't have evolution, it would be very difficult to explain um, what's happening here. Another good example is antibiotic resistance. So an antibiotic is a drug that you take to kill bacteria. So it's not for viruses, that's why the doctor will only give it to you um, if you have a bacterial infection. So here's the key, um, low resistance is yellow and high resistance is red. So you'll have this bacterial population and the doctor will give you antibiotics for 10 days, let's say. And um, let's say you, you take the drug and so it kills off all the ones that are not super resistant to HIV. You kill all those. And let's say you feel, and, and this is what's left, Let's say you feel better um, in a couple of days, and you say, you know what, I hate taking medicine. Um, I don't like drugs. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, what happens is that the couple that are left reproduce. So they do binary fission, make more and more of themselves, and look at all the ones that are resistant now. So if you decide to go back on the antibiotic, it's going to be harder for that antibiotic to kill these off. So that's why when you're given antibiotics, you really should finish the whole, um, you know, the whole prescription. And um, here's another way that you can get antibiotic resistance. If you have um, a resistant antibiotic, uh, a bacterium, this is a bacterium. Here's its chromosome, and it's circular, but it's hard to see because it's kind of mixed in. Anyway, here's a plasmid, which is a little piece of DNA that um, a bacterium can have in addition to its one chromosome. And here's a bacterium that's sensitive. That means it can be killed by the antibiotic. This is called conjugation. So not all bacteria, but some bacteria can form this little tube between bacteria. And so this can copy itself, and a copy of it can go in here. So it's really um, sort of like a bacterial sex. They don't have babies, but they do spread their DNA. So now you have two bacteria that are resistant to this antibiotic. So this is called conjugation. Um, let's write it this way. And that's the way, one way that antibiotic uh, resistance can spread. And so that's this conjugation when it spreads this way. Transformation, um, we talked about when we did the Griffin experiments, um, when we talked about the Griffin experiments. So there could be a resistant gene on a plasmid here that's taken up and brought into, um, or just a piece of it that's taken in um, to a plasmid in here. So here's the gene that goes into DNA and then that forms a circular plasmid. Um, or it might go into a chromosome. And then another one is transduction. So this is all called horizontal gene transfer. That horizontal gene transfer is when you're, when DNA is moved from one, from one bacterium to another, but it's not to the babies. So that's why it's not parent to offspring. It's horizontal. It's one to another. So transduction happens when you have um, a bacterium infected by a virus, the virus makes more and more of itself, but by accident it grabs a little bit of um, the bacterial DNA with the viral DNA, and that bacterial can, DNA can get into the new bacterium when the virus infects it.